Using Kendra's instructions, Filet finally made it to the gateway. While she was jogging through the jungle, she had time to think. What did she eat that's been making her so sick? Was it really food poisoning or... Nonetheless, she is excited to see what her husband found and walks through the gate to meet up with him. Filet didn't know what to expect, but for some reason she thought that the Omascon royal bass would be more, well, lavish. Regardless, she was stoked that her husband was enjoying their honeymoon because he got to put his love of archaeology to good use. Filet looked around and found her husband digging at a pile. It seems he has established himself a proper excavation site. She was so proud of him. She jogs over to join him and lend a hand. They carefully dig around for a while. Filet is a little anxious about what she wants to tell him. Hey, Kenjo, do you remember what we talked about the other night? Filet asked. Not even looking up, Kenjo replies, hmm. What are you talking about? What night? When? Two nights ago? In the kitchen of the villa? I asked you how you felt about having children, and you asked me why. Remember yet? Said Filet. Oh yeah, I remember now. What about it? Returns Kenjo. You know how I haven't been feeling well? Well, when you were upstairs reading, the nausea hit me so hard I threw up. I'm lucky I made it to the bathroom. I thought it had to be food poisoning. But you ate the same thing I did at the market. I ate from your plate and you're fine, Filet explained. Feeling concerned, Kendra replied, Really? Yeah. I was fine after our market breakfast. I thought it was well cooked. I didn't have a problem. You threw up. Are you okay? Are you feeling better now? It couldn't be food poisoning. The food we've been eating, it was great. Could it have been something else? In a calm and thoughtful tone, Filet said, Okay. Well, not really. I'm still feeling kind of nauseous. That's why I didn't want to come exploring with you earlier this week. So I stayed at the villa to paint and relax. I kept thinking back to what we've been eating, and I don't think it's food poisoning. Kenjo looks up into Filet's eyes and asks with concern, Hmm, not food poisoning. What else could it be? Do you think you're coming down with something? Yeah, no, I think I've come to the conclusion that it's not food poisoning. I do think it's something else, though, Filet said. She opened her mouth to continue, but Kenjo cut her off accidentally. Oh no. Something else? What do you think could be wrong? Maybe we can see... He says in a very worried tone. Wait. Wait, hold on, Kenjo. Hold your horses. I think I might be pregnant, says Filet. With shock, Kenjo says... P pregnant... But, uh... But... Wait, wait. Did you take a test yet? No, not yet. We can stop at the Market Plaza and try to find one, Filet said. Kenjo nods. His head is swirling with thoughts. He goes back to digging at the site so they can go right to the market. They got to the market just as it was getting dark. The only place that was open was the bar, so they ordered some yerba mate and fish tacos. While ordering dinner, they asked the bartender if there was a shop in town that was open right now, and he said no. They asked if there was a shop at all that had pregnancy tests. He said yes, but everything's closed, but to come back in the morning. After they finished the dinner, they went back to the villa for the night and went to bed. Early the next morning, Filet awoke before her husband and went over to the market to see if she could track down that all-important pregnancy test. She decided to stay a little while longer and do a little shopping. Kenjo called to let her know that he was going to go exploring to see what else he could find. As Kenja was hacking through the vines covering one of the gates, he suddenly heard someone beside him. Where did he come from? Almost immediately after Kenja notices him, the stranger got surrounded by little balls of what looked like fire that swirled around him. The stranger, who Kenjo later learns is Dondre Koi, bursts into flames. Kenjo started freaking out and didn't know what to do. What the frack, dude? 
Kenja exclaimed. Well, sorry. Next time my body catches on fire, I'll be sure not to randomly apparate before you. Dandel replied. Whatever. Sorry, man. I was startled. Where did you come from anyway? How did you get here? Said Kenjo. No idea. I was doing some hiking off the trailhead, and I tripped over a tree root. I think I must have knocked myself out, because the next thing I knew, I was here. And on fire. Danda exclaimed. You gonna be okay? Do you need me to call someone? Asked Kenjo. Danda says, nah, I think I'll be fine. Thanks for putting me out, though. I think I'm gonna go back to my rental. See you around. Kenjo watched as Danda walks away, shrugs, and gets to cutting through the vines again. What will he find beyond this next gate, he wonders. Filet grabs some platanos maduros for breakfast. Being nauseous, it was the only thing that really sounded good that morning. Besides, she has really gotten good at haggling and wanted to put her skill to the test. After she ate, she went over to a woman at her market stall that was selling dolls. Filet reintroduced herself, as did the woman, and she called herself Isabella Guzman. Filet spoke with Isabella for a little bit. While chatting and looking at Isabella's stock, she asked if there was a shop she could get a few things, like food, snacks, a pregnancy test. Isabella's face grew bright and a gentle smile came upon her face, and she nodded. Isabella said, yes, there is a shop just down the way. You can't miss it, pointing down the walkway. From the moment I met you and your husband the first time, I knew you had life inside you. It's just a gift I was given. My mother and abuela both had this gift. Looking at Isabella, she was a little shocked, but not terribly surprised. Filet looked back at Isabella. I'm really pregnant. Are you sure, like, really, really? My mother once told me stories about women with special abilities such as yours. There was one in our kingdom, but she was elderly and starting to become a little bit senile. Filet told Isabella about herself and life as a mermaid in the kingdom of O'Fish as they walked over to the little shop down the street to get a few things. Filet asked questions about the baby. Was it healthy? Was it a boy, girl, or non-conforming? Was it human or merfolk? Did it have tail or legs, fins or feet? You know, the usual questions. They spoke for what seemed like hours. Filet felt as if she'd known Isabella all her life. Kenjo finally cleared the vines, but it was already 6.30 in the evening, and he was excited to get back to Filet to see if she got the test. He ran as fast as he could back to the villa and his beloved wife. As soon as he saw her, he ran up to her asking if she was able to get the test, to which she immediately nods with the biggest smile on her face. He grinned back, but with a cocked eyebrow because she had this look about her that said she knew something that he didn't. Nonetheless, they embraced, and Kenjo followed Flay to the bathroom. She did the test, as it said on the box. Flay set the timer on her phone, and they went back into the bedroom to wait. The timer went off on Flay's phone. They looked into each other's eyes. Kenjo put Flay's hands into his, and they went to the bathroom to find that the test was indeed positive. Isabella was right, and Flay's suspicions about how she was feeling were also correct. The biggest smile sprang to both of their faces. Kenjo was apprehensive a few days ago, but considering that this is truly happening right now, he could not be more thrilled and blessed. They held each other tightly as they pressed their lips together. A more emotional, passionate, and loving kiss you had never seen. They didn't ever want to let go of each other. Kenjo was the one that spoke first. You, my love, you're going to be the best mom. They spent the rest of the night under the covers of their bed, in each other's arms talking about anything and everything as the floods of emotions waxed and waned until they fell asleep. 
I hope you enjoyed this week's video, and if you did, please comment, rate, subscribe, and share with your friends. Don't forget to come back next time when Filet and Kenjo discover the legends of the Hidden Temple. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. May you be well, happy, and peaceful, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.